Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA CyberOps, Chapter 4, Network Protocols and Services. This is Section 4.3, Connectivity Verification. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to use common testing utilities to verify and test network connectivity, explain how ICMP is used to test network connectivity, and use ping and traceroute utilities to test network connectivity. 4.3.1 ICMP Now, if you remember from the previous section, IP protocol, IP on its own, it's media independent, best effort and connectionless protocol. So best effort. So it doesn't really depend. It doesn't, if any of the packet gets missing, it doesn't really uh, resend them. It leaves that to other protocol like the TCP. Um, now TCP IP suite does provide for messages to be sent in the event of certain errors. So for example, not to make it reliable, not to make IP reliable, but we use some message protocol, ICMP messages to tell what happened. So these messages are used to, to provide the feedback about the issues related to the process of IP packet under certain conditions, not to make the IP protocol reliable. So ICMP messages are not required and sometimes they do actually close them. They do, they do stop them on the network. And uh, you have a common ICMP v4 uh, for IPv4 and ICMP v6 for IPv6 messages. So for example, if you remember, this is the IP header and then we have ICMP header as well and ICMP payload. ICMP messages, they provide a feedback again, not for troubleshooting. So for example, if you want to test uh, from the source to destination that there is a connectivity, we send an echo request. So echo request from the source to destination. And then if the destination is there, it's going to reply with echo reply. So this is uh, to make sure that the reachability is there. We send an echo request from the source to destination. And if the destination is there, it's going to reply with echo reply. Other messages that we have, for example, is destination unreachable. Now, for some reason, if the router cannot send a packet towards a destination, it's going to reply to the sender with a destination unreachable message. There could be different type of destination unreachable message, like, for example, network unreachable, host is unreachable, maybe protocol or port is unreachable. Other type of messages that we have with ICMP, for example, is time exceeded. Time exceeded is the TTL. Now, T TTL is like we set the TTL, for example, to say 64, and every hop, every hop, and when it goes from one router to another router, one the, the the router in question reduces one hop. If the TTL re reaches zero, then we reply to the source. We say, okay, well, TTL or time exceeded message. Other messages is source quench, source quench and redirect, for example, some other messages. So quench to, uh, to reduce the, the messages, maybe it's too busy. Redirect if maybe the path to destination, we have a better path to the destination. Router solicitation and router advertisement messages. Now, for example, if the device wants to find out what is the what network does it belong, he has unassigned IP address and he sends a router solicitation message. Now that router solicitation message goes to the multicast address of all routers. That is a multicast cost for all routers. FF02 colon colon two. To ask pretty much is asking, okay, what is our what is our uh, network address? And what is, what is my IP address? What do I do? And this, this type of router solicitation message is 133. It can be sent every 200 seconds or on the boot. Now, once the router hears that router solicitation message, it will send a router advertisement message towards the PC. Router advertisement message is type 134 and is responding to the PC or every 200 seconds as well. The address, the source address is its own link local address. So FE80, anything link local address is going to be the source as well as for the router solicitation messages, FE80. I, remember, every time 
we enable IPv6, the device will get a link local address with FE80. For example, it will generate it itself, or you can type it, but it needs a link local address. And that address is going to be using for all communication on the local link. So now, router hears the router solicitation message, and he it replies with the router advertisement message. And router advertisement message goes to FF02, colon, colon, one. That is a multicast address for all nodes. Remember, the IPv6 does not have a broadcast address, but it has these two addresses that we use for all nodes and all routers. And this is router advertising message was sent a flag, auto config flag. How do you get an IP address? So there's two flags. There's M flag and O flag. So managed and other flag. For example, if managed flag is zero, and other flag is zero, that means that you assign your own IPv6 address. You will assign your own IPv6 address. And this is known as stateless, stateless or Slack for short, yeah? Stateless address, stateless address auto configuration. You're gonna assign yourself an IPv6 address. Give you an IPv6 of whatever the network that we belong. For example, 2001, 2001, DB8, that's our network. ACAD uh, 1 forward slash 64. 64. Says, okay, well, that's the address. Please assign yourself an IPv6 address. And this device will assign an IPv6 address using that's a network address and is going to use its own MAC address, its own MAC address to assign the last 64 bits. So that's we have 64 bits. That's the network address. That one there that we just got. And the last 64 bits here that we have, we're going to use our MAC address. We find out the MAC address and we fit the, the 64 bit. But MAC address, remember, is only 48 bits. So in the middle, we'll put FFFE in the middle to make up another 16 bit to make it 64. And then the last, uh, the seventh digit, it gets flipped. But again, we go in depth about that a bit later on the class, on the curriculum. But this is a router advertisement message. It's telling the client what to do or how to assign an IPv6 address. So, for example, um, the other message that could be, for example, is the managed flag is zero. Again, let's clear this up. The managed and all flag, the managed flag is zero and other flag is one. This says, okay, well, now you use a stateless address auto configuration, but with DHCP, for example, with DHCP. So this says, well, assign yourself an address like before, but ask DHCP for other information like the DNS. Or what we could have is M flag is one. There's no O flag. That means everything is through DHCP. So that is the auto config flags. It's important the information here, auto config flags. So we have three, three types. Slack, which means you do everything. We have a Slack with DHCP, so with DHCP, DHCP, or we just have DHCP. Now Slack was uh, O flag, O and M, O flag, O flag was, uh, O flag was zero, F flag was zero, Slack with DHCP, O flag was one, M flag was zero, and just DHCP, there's no O flag, and then M flag is one, that's managed. These are the information what we have. The FF02, colon, colon, two for all routers. That's the solicitation message. An advertisement message is FF02, colon, colon, one. That's all nodes. For example, in IPv6, we don't have ARP. If we know IPv6 address, but we still need to know the MAC address, the devices need to find out somehow that MAC address. One way to do it is by neighbor solicitation message. Neighbor solicitation message. Used between IPv6 devices when the device knows an IPv6 address, but not its MAC address. Similar to what we have ARP on IPv4. And then once we assign IPv6 address ourselves, we used our uh, whatever the messages that came, the auto config messages that came in. If we sign an IPv6 address ourselves, we do a duplicate address detection to make sure that nobody else is be, will be using that address. But nobody else will be using that address because if you use your own MAC address, you should be having uh, 
unique MAC address. But sometimes some some vendors they don't really want to show the MAC address, so they randomly generate the last 64 bits, and then definitely we need to use a duplicate address detection or DAD. 4.3.2 ping and trace route utilities. So for example, like we said earlier, uh, the address 127.001 or 127.0004/8 is reserved for pinging, for ping testing or testing the local stack. So if we want to test and making sure that the device, if we put a network card and making sure that we have the driver correctly configured, then we test, we ping this and we know, okay, well, our driver, our network card is finally installed, correctly installed, and it's ready to work. Even if we have not con connected the cable, that's just testing ourselves. The next thing we can test is we can test our local network, making sure that, okay, well, say, say one device, for example, let's say that this device is having some problems. You can't access some device on the internet. Before we access, before we check anything, making sure that okay well ping the gateway so ping 10.0.0.254 if the device can ping the gateway so the big gateway is usually is always on so we have to ping echo request echo reply if we have a reply from the gateway we know our local network we can access the local network the problem is at the gateway because we can't access the other devices on the remote network for example if, for example, we can't ping the gateway, we have to start troubleshooting this device because this device wasn't able to ping the gateway either. So we have a problem here. So we check the properties of our network card. Then ping in the remote network. So for example, if we want to ping some remote network, we have to, um, well, first, when you do troubleshooting, for example, first thing you need to ping yourself, making sure that your stack is fine, is working, then ping the remote, ping the gate default gateway, if, make sure that that's working, and then ping the remote network. So for example, this network, this device 10.0.0.0.1 is pinging 10.0.1.1, that, that is on the different network. Remember, every, every interface on the router is its own network. So that's one network, and that's another network here. So when we ping from here to there, that's we ping in the remote network. Trace route or testing the path. For example, when we do ping, we can see either the device is actually responding or not. But we don't really know the path that is taking, the device is taking to get to the destination. So the packets, the way the, the packets are going towards the destination. So we can, if we want to see what path the packets are taking, we use trace route. Trace route, it will tell us that. So we have a trace route there. What trace route does is like it uses a TTL value, the TTL. So for example, remember the TTL time to live was you could set it to uh, well, what number? When it reaches zero, the router will send you destination unreachable. So if the device sets this TTL to one. So when it gets to the destination, this router will reduce that TTL to zero, will go to zero and says, okay, well, I don't, um, I don't have it. The TTL has gone down to re zero, time exceeded, send back. Okay, so this device finds out that, okay, I'll have the router there. So this device, or this device here, will increase that TTL to two, TTL to two, for example. And as the, as the hop goes, and it forwards it to the router. And this router is going to reduce that TTL to one and forward it back. And when it gets the risk router, now it's TTL zero. So this router will send the time exceeded message. So now this PC is okay, well, I'm going there, then I'm going to the next router. Then it will increase for say, okay, well, now I increase the TTL to three. So when it goes there, that's one. So that goes down to two. When it goes there, it goes down to one. When it goes there, that goes down to zero. So now this router will send a time exceeded. So that's how it builds, or that's how it finds out this PC, the packets, the way they're going to the destination. Thank you, very, thank you for watching this section, 4.3, connectivity verification. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Next video, a 4.4 address resolution protocol. Bye-bye.